the longer LK5 Pro 3D printer. Previous video did all the assembly and the initial setup on it and the bed leveling. Uh, what I'm going to show here is how to load the filament and obviously we're going to need to clean the bed or nothing's going to stick to it. Go over a few of those things coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop. I should say the loft above the shop and I'm working on my new longer LK5 Pro 3D printer here. As you can see behind me I have four Creality Ender 3 V2s that are almost in constant use. Uh, they are kind of an entry level printer. I wanted to move up, get something a little uh, fancier I guess you could say. Has a little bit more build area, not that I necessarily need the height for what I do, but I may need something in the future. Has a touch screen. Uh, the bed leveling on it is very simple. It doesn't have auto bed leveling on it. I have never found a re reason to do that. Uh, I've always got by just fine leveling them manually and they stay where I put them. I've upgraded springs in these back here so I don't have issues there. Probably won't have any issues here. But I will show you how to load the filament on here. We'll do an initial test print. I haven't printed anything on this yet. As I said, it's brand new. So we're going to get into loading the filament here first. Okay, to load the filament from the home screen, I, hopefully you can see everything here. Little icon that says filament, and click on that. You need to pick PLA. That's what the filament is I'm going to be using. It does come with some sample filament, but I did not want to use that because it's black and it's going to be hard to see on a black bed, so I've got a partial spool of white we're going to load. Down here you'll see it says filament change, 200C, we're going to load that. So we got to get the nozzle heated up to temperature where we can load that filament. Okay, and once it says OK, load filament, which is what we're going to do here. So like I say, I have a partial spool here, a spool holder. There is a place to just slip this in back here, right underneath the filament runout sensor. Push that in. There's a lever here you push so that you can pass the filament through. Which will then pass into the Capricorn tubing. And then you just let it feed itself. It's all automatic. And we'll wait for filament to come out the nozzle. And once the filament starts oozing out, you just hit OK to stop and it'll go back to the uh, heat screen, filament screen. Okay, before I take this back home, I'm going to clean that bed. And what do I use? Uh, since this is the initial startup of this, I'm going to use 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol because I know there's some like greasy film on that glass bed. Otherwise, I use either what's a product called Glance, which is like Windex, or I could use Windex. I'm going to get the bed all cleaned up here. Okay, so I know everybody's going to want to see this print something. So we'll take this back to move. We'll take it home on the X and Y. Then we'll take it home on the Z. And I've put a small file on there, something that won't take real long to print. A bracket that I use quite a bit. I believe there's enough filament on that spool to make it. We'll take this back home. File. Start printing. Bed temperature is 60 degrees centigrade in the Hot end temperature is 200 degrees centigrade. I'm using PLA.
Okay, so helpful hint number one, uh, as you see here, I have these Ender 3 printers and I just grabbed a file to put onto this one without thinking about the G code being different because the parameters of this printer are different than the Ender 3 V2s are. So I had to redo the G code and start my print over. So that's taking a little bit longer. So uh, get a little SD card, micro SD card and a little card reader here. Take you on the computer here and I'll show you what's on it. And I'll show you how to get this printer set up in Cura. So what's on this micro SD card that comes with this printer? Well, let's take a look here. Uh, you'll get a version of Cura 4.8. I do encourage you though to go to Cura's website and download the most recent version which is 4.11 which will already have the parameters for this printer in it and I'll show you how to get that set up here in a minute. There's a little uh, deal here on how to install the filament guide and to the string relief bracket. You'll get the full instruction manual and then there are some test files for you to play with there. The Benchy is uh, the little boat like a lot of people like to make and I haven't messed with any of these yet but that's what's there. So let's go to uh, Cura. I already have that open here. I already have this set up. So up here if you don't already have a printer uh, you'll be asked to set this up as you uh, set up the software. If you already have the software and you have other printers, for example I have for Creality Ender 3 V2 printers. So you would click on Add Printer and I'm doing non-network. So you would go here then you would just scroll down over here on the left you get to the L category click on Longer. First we have the Longer LK5 Pro right here. You click on that then just click on Add. And since I've already done that I'm not going to hit Add again. But that will put all your parameters in there for that printer. So how much noise does this make? Not much. I've got four printers running behind me and all the fans are running and it's, I mean, there's a lot of uh, white noise behind me. Uh, if I get down real close to this, I can hear the fans running, of course. Uh, would you want this in your bedroom next to your bed? Run it all night? Yeah, probably not unless you like white noise. But it's not obnoxiously loud or anything. Um, the Creality's tend to be a little bit louder than a lot of the other printers I've seen and it's definitely louder than this. That's just kind of give you a little bit of an idea noise wise of it's kind of hard to get down and record a fan blowing but there's a lot of noise behind me and I'm hopefully the mic isn't picking all that up. So what do I make with my 3D printers? Well I'm mostly custom brackets and mounts for other people. Uh, I do make a few things for myself, and contrary to popular belief, this is not an ashtray. This is a coaster with a bunch of little skulls around it, and it glows in the dark. But that was just a little fun thing I made. And that's lemonade. Adult lemonade, but it's lemonade. So what else do I make? Uh, different types of brackets, uh, drag chain mounts. There's a couple of different drag chain mounts for using on lasers. Uh, different types of uh, mounting feet for different lasers and other desktop apparatus. Sliding brackets for mounting laser heads or making them adjustable. And other types of mounting brackets when you're putting a laser head on something that wasn't really designed for that laser head. And I custom make these. A lot of the things uh, I make, you, you can get the files of Thingiverse and make them yourself. That's the whole thing about having a 3D printer. But not everybody has a 3D printer. For example, you don't have a 3D printer and you bought a desktop laser and you want to use uh, the roller attachment with it and you need risers. Well, there's a file, yeah. But they're not interested in going out and buying a 3D printer just to print some risers. So they order them from me and that's what we make. That's what we sell. And I do some other uh, custom bracketry for other people. For example, this one here is uh, I have a customer that uses these in particular and this is a custom design. I also make riser blocks for drag chains uh, to get them to mount on lasers that were not really designed to have drag chains. 
So that type of thing. I do not print drag chains because you can buy those way cheaper than you can make them. Let's just give you a little bit of an overview of what I use my 3D printers for. A couple little fun projects, but it's mostly things that uh, we sell. So one of my next quandaries is, where is this guy going to live? I can't keep it right here. I use this table for all kinds of things. And as you can see behind me, I'm, I'm running out of space here. I mean, I've, there's a refrigerator over there that is not used. It works, but it's not being used right now. The beer fridge is downstairs in the shop. But then we have a stove over here where you can't see it. It's out of the picture. And I actually have a great big die cutter sitting on top of that right now. Um, I have two carts here. Each one of them has two printers on it. I think my only space left in here is going to be clearing off my corner over here where I like to store stuff because it's a flat surface. Now, if there's a flat surface, by golly, I'll put something on it. But that's also got some usable or things I use all the time over there, so I'm going to have to find another place for those. But I do think this printer will fit over there. The uh, loft wall here, this is a what they call a gambrel roof on this building so it does have a pitch to it but I, I think it will fit over there and it'll be far enough away from the sink that it doesn't get splashed I, I hope otherwise I'll have to put a little guard up or something uh, but otherwise I'm kind of running out of space to put things I, I do have a uh, one of the bedrooms up here converted to what I call my laser room I've got nine diode lasers in there right now so that room's clear, clear full there's no room for anything else uh, the other part of the loft up here, which is uh, the side actually where the camera's sitting now, is if you've watched any of my uh, videos on using a heat press or doing sublimation or any of that type of thing, those are shot over on that side. So I, I need to keep that space open for that. So running out of room up here. But I think this is going to live up there just fine, and it'll be getting a lot of use. Uh, of course, this is the first thing I printed on it. But it looks like it's going to work just fine. And something that I neglected to show uh, when I was putting this together is there's a filament guide that goes right here. It just clips. It's a 3D printed part that comes with it. And it just slips on. There's a little Teflon tube that goes in it. And it just slips over this part of the uh, bracket right here. Like so. And the theory is that the filament is to pass through that and then go into the extruder. Well, I'm looking at the angle here. I don't know. Maybe I'll need to make that tube a little shorter. I think if I try to bring this clear up here, the angle is going to be too obtuse. So I'm going to have to cut this down a little bit. Uh, as I said, this filament that's on here, this is just for a test print. There's not much left on this spool. So when I change it, I'll be um, making a little modification and getting that to run through there. So far, I have not had any problems with it feeding as it is. Other than it's very close to the filament runout sensor pickup. And there we have it. Part came out perfect, good and smooth, no rough edges. So what do I think so far? I'm happy with it. And I've got a, my space cleared off over here. I'll be moving that over here shortly. And there'll be more videos coming up as I start to put this through its paces because I'm going to put it into full use here probably tomorrow or the next day and start making a lot of parts. One of the nice things about the larger build plate is I can make more parts at once. I'm not so quite so restricted. So, got anything out of this? Appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the loft above the shop. Longer LK5 Pro 3D printer. Hey, it works. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.